I today want to share with you a simple mid-range mixing reference trick that will definitely help you when mixing. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Crystal M here from Mixdown Online. Now, before we start this one up, if you want to speed up your mixing workflow, you can watch my free workshop on how to create the perfect mix template. In this workshop, I share with you my own process on how I built my mixing template. And if you're a Cubase user, you can also download entirely free uh, some uh, mixing templates you can base yourself on to create your own personalized mix template. So check it out, the link is down below. Now let's talk about the mid-range. Why is the mid-range so important? Uh, basically, it's because most of the instruments that we record, that we mix, will utilize the mid-range, uh, whether we're talking about the kick drum, a bass, a guitar, especially a voice. So the majority of what we hear and what we listen to will reside somehow in the mid-range. So that's why it's important to focus on the mid-range when mixing. You know that our ears are more sensible to mid-range frequencies than anything else. So that's why it's very important to get this one right. This way, your mixes are also going to translate way better on other systems. Okay, it's not all systems that will will have a sub or will uh, will have like high quality uh, top end like you have in your, with your studio monitors. You know, you're not going to have the same result with earbuds. You know, for example. So uh, if you get that mid range right, your mixes are going to definitely sound better on other systems. So the first thing that we need to do is to identify and monitor, listen to how the mid range sounds like. I don't know if you know about the Yamaha NS10s studio monitors like this one you know so <laughs> this is an actual uh, ns10 speaker or the oratones which this is not an oratone speaker but it's a oratone like uh, speaker which will focus like the ns10s uh, will focus more on the mid-range you're, you're not going to get any sub bass frequencies with these speakers or super high top end you know those speakers will focus way more on the mid-range and that's why a lot of mixers are going to tend to have a pair in their studio so this way they can monitor and listen to how their mixes sounds like in the mid-range so if you don't own a pair of ns10s or a pair of oratone speakers we can actually, you know, mimic the same type of result, like close, in our DAW. And this is what I want to show you today. So let's go and take a look uh, right in Cubase. Now I'm going to use two of my songs for uh, this video, uh, so I don't get any copyright claim of some sort. Now, the most simple way to monitor the mid-range is to use an EQ plugin, and you just add this one up straight on your master output. Um, and in my case, I'm going to use the control room that I have on a Cubase Pro. Now, if you use Cubase Pro and you don't work with the control room yet, you have to. I'm going to leave a link on top and down below uh, so you can go watch my video, you know, a full video that I, uh, that I made on the control room of Cubase. So check this one out. So I'm going to open this plugin, which is a stock uh, EQ plugin within Cubase. So what I'm going to focus on is the mid-range. Now, when I talk about the mid-range, I'm talking like between 250, 300 hertz to maybe 4K uh, or so, you know, something in between. Okay, that can be more or less, but it's, you know, it's going to be within that range in general. And within that mid-range, you can actually split that up to three ranges, uh, the low mids, the mids, and the high mids, okay? But for this video, what I'm doing is I focus on the full mid-range frequencies. Uh, so this is what I did here. I just add up a uh, high pass and low pass filter uh, to up to uh, 250 hertz and 4K. And this is uh, what I get. And my filter curve uh, is going to be at around 24 dB per octave. Uh, which is going to do the trick pretty well. So this is how my mix sounds like without adding this plugin. Okay, so if I want to focus on the mid-range, I'm going to activate this uh, EQ. And this is very close to what this type of oratone type speaker 
is going to reproduce. Okay, so it is a good way to uh, kind of you know uh, monitor the mid range of your mix and see what is happening here. You know, so this way you can make the right mixing decisions according to the mid range. But if you want to bring this one up a notch, the best is to reference with a pro mix uh, that you know pretty well. And I talked about reference tracks uh, on other videos, and I'm actually going to send you to the video right here on top and down below um, to my tutorial video on how to reference mixes within Cubase, um, which is the technique that I use on my side, where I, again, use <laughs> the control room uh, to do so, uh, to go from my actual mix to my reference mix. And this is what I'm going to do right now. So I have uh, a reference mix, which is another song of mine for the purpose of this video. So let's just go and compare uh, the mid-range of this actual mix with my reference. Okay, so that is a very good way to compare with a pro mix uh, if you're in the ball game when it comes to the mid-range. Now, a lack of mid-range in the mix uh, can result into a less defined mix. And having too much mid-range in the mix uh, can add a bit more edginess to a full mix. You know, So uh, this is the type of thing you need to pay attention when you compare your mix to another mix using the mid-range only. Another plugin I like to use when monitoring frequency bands, um, and this one actually brings the experience to the next level, is a multi-band compressor. Um, now, I'm not gonna compress the signal, don't worry, the way I use the, uh, the multi-band compressor in this case is to create myself a mid-range band, and by default, I'm gonna have a low uh, frequency band and also a high frequency band, uh, which can be useful also so if you want to compare your low end or top end with another mix. And what is important if you're planning on using a multiband compressor is to make sure that the threshold is at zero because you don't want that compressor to work. You know, I just want to use uh, the bands and that's it. And by using those different bands, I'm going to be able to solo each band's individually. So this way I'm going to be able to monitor the low end on its own, the mid range, and also the top end, which is quite nice. So let's do this with the mid-range. If I want to monitor the bass frequencies, if I want to compare those, uh, those frequencies with my reference, and I can do the same with the top end frequencies. You know, so that can be useful, but I mainly focus on what we call the mid-range. So using uh, the FabFilter Pro MB, for example, can be very, very cool. Now, my suggestion when you want to, uh, to listen to the mid-range of your mix is to also compare that mid-range to your reference Pro track uh, that you reference with. This way you'll know if you're in a good place when it comes to the mid-range. And something else that I do is I actually don't switch uh, with the full range uh, mix to the mid-range only, you know, so I just stop the music, take maybe a couple of minutes of break, and then I'm going to uh, listen to my mix using my, you know, Oratone types uh, uh, speakers or uh, a plugin uh, to mimic the mid-range, you know. So I am always take a couple of minutes of break before I switch from one to another. So this way it doesn't freak you out when you switch. And also, I don't mix my whole song by only listening to the mid-range, you know. I'm just going to use my my full uh, my full range uh, studio monitors to do my, uh, my mix, but I also always going to check how my mid-range sounds like throughout the mix. So there you go. So those are my tips for monitoring the mid-range, uh, what you can do uh, to monitor the mid-range on your own using an EQ plugin, a multi-band uh, compressor, by also referencing the mid-range of your mix with a pro mix. So I hope those tips are useful and will help you produce better mixes. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. And also don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care, my friend. See you.